Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Off-Road. This is a really exciting video because right now I'm here in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Kawasaki Manufacturing Plant. That right there behind me is the start of the production line for the Kawasaki Mule. And as you know, we've had a mule at our ranch for the... Really loud in here. We've had a, a mule at our ranch for the past few months. So today we get to get a behind the scenes look at how that machine is actually made from start to finish. Um, and there's a lot of other products that they make here, here at this facility. ATVs, side-by-sides, uh, they make some aircraft doors, rail cars. There's a ton that goes on here. So I'm really excited to check it all out. Let's take a deep dive into uh, how some of these machines are made. So this is what our mule looked like at one point. It starts basically with the frame. This is what you get right here. And this is where it all starts. So you can see they all kind of move on these carts. One of the first things to go in is the engine. So the exhaust just went into that model right there. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the, the start of uh, assembly on the mule. So this little orange cart right here follows these orange lines on the floor uh, to bring the assembly cart to the start of the assembly line. Then they drop the frame down in place. Um, and then this cart will then loop back around and pick up the next one and just keep the line going. Um, and these little assembly carts are pretty cool. They raise and lower the height. So depending on what the assembler is working on or how tall the person working on it is, they can raise or lower uh, the entire machine and get it exactly where they need it to be. So there you can see frame just dropped down. This cart's gonna follow this orange line back around pick up another one and by the time it gets right back around here they'll be ready to start production on another model. That's a pretty awesome sound. I don't know why that makes me laugh so much but it's a happy cart. And right here at the start of the assembly line, you can see that board up there. That's telling what the different models coming down are. So uh, the people building it know exactly what the next model coming through is going to be. So all the info's right there. This is pretty cool too. This little board just gives you an idea of what's going on here. So um, looks like something just happened actually and they stopped the line. And then over on the right, you can see um, how much stoppage time they've had, how many they've built. So, uh, you can see that 21 have been built, or they planned on building 21, 18 have actually made it, um, and that's because the line's been stopped for about 21 minutes. So they're two or three behind schedule right now, but whatever that little issue was, they got taken care of pretty quickly. Now you can see that green run at the top, so uh, the line is back in action. So you can see here as it starts to move down the line a little bit, they get a few more parts, so the front part of the floorboard is in, um, you can see that one up there has got some seat belts, so they're slowly moving their way down the line. Steering wheel too, some wiring and electronics, but we're still in the very early stages of production over here. Here they're finishing building some of the motors over here, so these guys are working on attaching some sensors it looks like, some other components, um, some of the cooling system components. Uh, so they kind of complete the engine over here and then take it over there and stick it into one of the frames as it moves down the line. Uh, this robot over here looks like it is applying some sealant to some of the engine cases. Um, so a good mix of automation and uh, actual people wrenching on these things. But lots of people, lots of moving parts, uh, and everyone it seems has a pretty specialized task. So everything happens pretty smoothly and easily. We've got a seat now mounted up. Here you can see a little bit up close with the engine. Suspension's now on, we've got brakes on. Um, so yeah, slowly coming together, some electronics, pedals are in, um, but still a long ways to go before this is all a complete mule. And as you can see, there's a lot of steps. If I lift the camera up here and kind of zoom in, you can see all the way down the line there. Also, this is a mixed production line, so you can see the seats on this model, a little bit more of a premium finish than what we just looked at. So not every single model going down the line here is exactly the same. 
different colors, different seat configurations, um, so different engine configurations. So they really need to stay on top of what parts are going into what vehicle. Um, so yeah, you have a ton of different uh, models going down the line. I even see the one with the bed down there is a diesel. So uh, yeah, definitely a mixed production line. So here's a stack of the rear seat bracket. This is uh, what the rear seat sits on. Use this a bunch to uh, convert the mule from a three seater to a six seater. But working on here, putting some different rubber mounts on it, some warning labels and stickers, and then it gets mounted right there in the back. So uh, yeah, every step down this line, there's a specific person doing a specific task. Um, and there you can see the rack of parts. It gives you a little info on it, what it's used for. So she's actually heating up the plastics uh, with this giant scary looking blowtorch. And then on the other side here, they're gonna start putting the graphics on. Door handles and latches get put on right here too. And yeah, once the plastic's heated up, they give it a little spray down. And they put the graphics on. Something tells me she's done that a time or two with no bubbles in there, happens very quickly. And then here, this rack has all the different decals laid out on it. So they're a little hard to see in these plastic bags, but all the different colors with different engine designations and different sizes are all stacked up here, ready to go on the different vehicles and labeled, of course, with a different part number. So the people on the assembly line know exactly which decals to put on what vehicles. Here we can see one of the uh, front bumpers being put together, some lights mounted up inside of there. And I wanna walk back here and just give you another look at another step of the assembly line. So we've got a hood coming together now. Um, front bumper guard is being put on at this station right here. The bed is pretty much all complete with graphics and all the different parts uh, that it needs. Um, still not much of an interior or an, or an enclosure here but we're getting there as we work our way down the line here. And then once again, all these racks of parts just hold very similar parts, but all a little bit different depending on what model they're going on. So different paint colors and textures. Uh, some of them have bigger cutouts for dual headlights, whereas some of them over here, a um, little more simple, plastic, um, and you know, with some holes covered up for vehicles that guess, get less equipment. We've got some more bumper guards up here, different selections of wheels and tires. And now, once they get the wheels and tires on, it really starts to look like a complete vehicle. No roll bar yet, so um, still a little ways away from being a complete Kawasaki mule. Um, but it really starts to take shape and look like a final product once the bed is on and the bodywork and the wheels and tires are all mounted up. So we're pretty close to the end of the line here and this red mule is about to come off the assembly line. So what happens is these carts that it's been on the whole time pull up into this notch right here. It lowers down and the mule will drop down onto this platform. Then the cart that it was on will lower itself all the way and it will go under here, pop out right over here. And one of these carts with the funny music will pick it up, take it along this orange line all the way back down to the start of the assembly floor and it starts again. So you saw where the cart first got its frame. You see where it drops down from the mule and then once it rolls down off this yellow line right here, uh, it goes onto this dyno and they basically give it its first drive, test out all the functions of it. So all the forward gears reverse, um, they test out all the features, all the lighting and make sure everything works as it should. And then it drives down uh, later down the assembly line over through that garage door right there. Still needs a few finishing touches like for example, the roof is just sitting in the bed right now. It still needs a roll cage and some other things, um, but it's pretty much done. And really, I'm pretty impressed by how short that process actually is. Um, obviously the one we saw 
getting its engine at the start is still a ways down the assembly line, uh, but there's really not all that many steps. It's not a super long walk all the way back to the start. After it rolls off the dyno right over there, it comes into this area. This is where they actually bolt up the uh, roll cages and build the crates. So the roll cages don't go on at the factory. They get bolted to the crate. That keeps the crate smaller, makes it easier to ship. You can see he's strapping this down right here. Uh, so the rest of the components go on at a dealership level. Uh, and here in the factory, once it rolls off that dyno, it gets mounted up into a crate and it's ready to be shipped out. And then once it's in the crate, you can see over here, they've got these big rollers on the floor and a massive conveyor belt. So they basically slide this whole thing out and it moves down the line, ready to go out for shipping. And here, rolling off the assembly line right now is a Mule Pro FXT Ranch Edition, just like the one we have up at Tumbleweed Ranch right now. So the exact mule that you've seen in all of our videos has gone through this is exact process in this exact spot right here. So that's exactly what ours look like and that is super cool to see the behind the scenes of. This is the other side of that conveyor belt right there. So the vehicles come down here. If they are ready to go in the crate, they go into storage. You can see all the crates stacked up back there. If they need a couple of finishing touches, that's where that happens on this other conveyor belt right here. Um, and then yeah, we basically behind here have a massive, massive storage facility just stacked with brand new power sports products. It's like a dream come true. It's pretty awesome. So um, we've got some side by side sitting over here getting finished up, but just an endless, endless stack of Kawasaki um, power sports products. A bunch of toys stacked floor to ceiling, uh, basically as far back as this warehouse goes. So we just looked at the production line for the Kawasaki Mule. You saw a lot of those parts were ready to go sitting on racks, just ready to be bolted up to the machine itself. But how do they make some of those parts? Let's take a look. So right here, they're working on wheels for some of the side-by-sides. And actually a fun fact about these wheels, they're not only used on Kawasaki side-by-sides. Kawasaki makes wheels for all different manufacturers, Honda, Polaris, Yamaha, they all use wheels made by Kawasaki. Um, that's starting to change a little bit now that a lot of the more premium models are going away from basic steel wheels like these to a more premium cast wheel. Um, so they're starting to tone that back a little bit, but still a lot of Honda, Polaris, Yamaha side-by-sides use Kawasaki wheels. So it starts off with just a steel blank, a flat piece of steel, then it goes through six different rolling processes. So first it's rolled into a coil, then in the next step, they weld that coil together, fill that gap right there. Then it moves on to the third process where they actually remove the bead from the weld, smooth it out. Then it goes into the fourth process. That's where it actually starts to take shape as a wheel. Then in the fifth process, they roll the lip into it uh, to give the bead something to hold on to. And then in the fifth process, the spider right there, that's what they call that piece, gets fitted in and machine welded into the center of the wheel. They can make them pretty quick. Kawasaki said when they're running at full capacity, they can make 10,000 of these wheels every single day, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and they're just cranking them out here. So they just put them over here, they get painted after this, and then go down to the assembly line ready to be bolted up to a machine. Also, here's a good look at how these center discs are made. So they start just like the wheel with the blank sheet right here, and then they go through and stamp it out in a bunch of different processes till you end up with the finished result. Uh, they can't do it just in one step because it would overstress the material. Things would start to break and crack. So they basically make minor modifications as they go along to get it to the point that they want it to be. And here you can see over here all the different machines stamping those different plates out. So basically drops material down and uh, it'll stamp a different shape into it and move it down onto the next step. So here we go.
you can tell there's some force going into that. So stamps it in and then moves it down onto the next step there. And it just keeps cooking. Here you can see this guy is getting some tires mounted up to the wheels and it's a process I've seen a bunch of times before but something pretty interesting is the tires actually come collapsed. So um, they're kind of squished down in this small package. That way they can stack up nicely together and save room. So he pulls one out, he goes ahead and uncollapses it again, which is something I haven't really seen before. And then just like normal, he goes ahead and puts it onto the wheel. So where those wheels were made were just through here. That's where all the production of parts is happening. Over here, this is a giant warehouse full of parts uh, that Kawasaki brings in from other manufacturers needed for their power sports products. So anything they don't make in-house gets stored right here. And they do just-in-time manufacturing for their side-by-sides and other power sports products. So I'm told that uh, typically there's about three days worth of parts uh, for production on these racks right here. So if the trucks and trains stop rolling in with these parts, there's really only enough here to last for about three days, which is pretty crazy because it looks to me like there's a lifetime worth of parts here. Uh, but it's really only three days worth of parts. Now this is really cool. You saw those forklifts running around getting parts off the racks um, that they were storing. But this is a new automated system that will pull parts automatically, which is super sweet. This is just the first row that they have installed, but they're gonna put another one in right here and then just keep working their way down the line. Uh, so eventually, the idea is this whole uh, parts warehouse will be fully automated and they can store a lot more parts in a smaller space this way. It's also easier to find things, quicker to find things. Um, yeah, it's just the way of the future. So this is a giant laser cutter machine. And basically what it does is it takes a giant 20 foot length of steel tubing, which you can see over here in all different shapes and sizes. Um, and it brings it into this big machine here. And in one step, basically, it will cut it and notch it out in different ways to make it usable for a frame. Kind of see the process going on in the different windows there, but then it will spit out um, different bits that are notched out perfectly to be able to fit together and be welded up to make a frame for a vehicle or really any other component that they need to make out of steel. Over here you can see the assembly line for some of their smaller engines that can be used in anything from lawn mowers to generators to snow blowers, uh, all kinds of different equipment. And then over here on this side, they're making gears and all kinds of other components for um, their off-road products like the Kawasaki Mule, the Terex, uh, all their different side-by-sides. So two completely different processes happening over here on this side and this side. They have nothing to do with each other, but they're still pretty much right in the same area. Also, all these tools that are being used are set to a specific torque, so every bolt that's being put in has a special torque it needs to be tightened to, uh, and if the person building it grabs the wrong uh, impact or the wrong torque wrench while they're putting this stuff together, 
uh, it will basically sound an alarm. That way um, everyone knows something wasn't done right. So pretty cool. There's sensors on everything. It's really high tech. And through this door is where all the upcoming future product is. And unfortunately, as badly as I want to go in there and check everything out, not able to do it today. So stay tuned to alltfl.com and whatever's behind these doors here will be on alltfl pretty soon. Now a lot of painting goes on in this factory, but there's some machines here that have special graphics packages that go on them. And that's where this dipping process comes into play right here. So they've got these rolls of graphics um, spooled up here. He basically rolls them out on the table, cuts it to size, and then he's gonna put that film inside of this bath and basically dip the parts in and it'll transfer the graphics over. Now he's basically tapping it all out just to get the little bubbles and creases worked out to make it as smooth as possible. So that's the part that's about to get dipped right there. So it did go through Kawasaki's paint department, got painted and primered white. Uh, now it's basically ready to go through this uh, hydro dip bath. Now this arm is gonna come across the table and spray this whole sheet. Basically this is ink with a cornstarch backing. Um, this activator is sprayed on which dissolves the cornstarch and basically just leaves the ink resting at the top of the water. Now the part comes in and the robotic arm just slowly dips it in and transfers the graphic. And just like that, it comes out as a camouflage part. That's really cool. I've seen that process a ton in different videos, never seen it in person. There's no way you can get that level of detail um, with any kind of paint or anything like that. So this is the most effective way to do it and it works pretty well. Once it's done, the robotic arm lifts it back up, puts it back on the assembly line and then it goes through an oven to bake and cure. I'm sure you've noticed all the white and red robotic arms all over the place in this factory and funny enough Kawasaki actually makes all of those too, although not in this factory. They used to make some of those here though. They also make all of their injection molded plastics here and it all starts with these little white beads. Some of them are colored too which obviously gives the plastic its color and then a giant machine feeds them into a high pressure mold and out pops a really pretty plastic piece. All of their diamond plate steel is also made in house. Uh, this piece right here looks like a bed for a mule and this was really mesmerizing to watch and apparently it's cheaper for Kawasaki to make all this stuff in house than to bring in uh, pre-diamond plated steel. And it's just really neat to see how they maximize their use of all their materials. All of these machines are super high precision and they're programmed to cut the metal in a way that wastes as little materials possible. <laughs> This is a really cool room up here. This is just a little collection of some of the vehicles that have been made at this factory. And a lot of the vehicles in here are one of the first ones to roll off the production line. So either VIN number one or VIN number two. Um, just really cool to walk through some of this history, see all the different machines that have been made at this factory, even some cool things like robot arms, jet skis, obviously side-by-sides, which is a lot, at, we, a lot of what we were looking at on the floor today. Um, and then really cool for me to see is some of the motorcycles. They used to produce motorcycles here. Um, they don't anymore. They moved their production back to Japan since side-by-sides have been exploding so much. Um, but just really sweet to see some of the models that have been produced right here in this factory. The jet skis are also made in this factory right here and it basically starts out with a hole. They get the engine mounted in, the fuel tank, and basically plumb and wire everything up while it's still easy to, to access. Then a big robotic arm puts some adhesive around the outside of it. They smash the two halves together and then it goes into a giant press to basically seal it into one piece and make a solid jet ski. Then it continues on down the assembly line. All the other bits and fin finishing touches are added to it. Um, and it just goes on from there. But this is the beginning stages right here of how a jet ski starts production.
So I don't know how many of you know this, but Kawasaki doesn't only make power sports products, they make a ton of other things, one of them being rail cars. And this manufacturing facility here in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, one of the things they make are rail cars. So you can see the production line here uh, for some different rail cars. This building is really impressive. It is over a quarter mile long, um, and it doesn't look like a whole lot is going on here. Um, compared to that other facility we were just in where, you know, there's tons of people running around, loud noises everywhere, parts flying, things are happening super fast. Um, over here, it's much more calm, things happen a lot slower. Um, and yeah, just really cool to see this process. One thing that's really neat is these little carts they roll around on here. They're not on wheels like the side-by-sides were. Um, these are air carts, so basically it's like an air hockey table upside down. It blows air onto the floor to give it a little bit of lift and then basically one person's able to move it around using one of these little contraptions that pushes the whole cart around. So that one is going into a car wash over there basically to test for uh, leaks. So they spray it with a ton of water, make sure that it's all watertight. But yeah, one of the many other things that Kawasaki makes besides side-by-sides and ATVs is rail cars. And here you can see they've got some tracks laid in the floor right here that go right outside. Uh, and these link up to the Union Pacific tracks. So some of these get taken out by truck and trailer, but other rail cars go right on the tracks and leave right out of the factory ready for service. And it's not just trains that they're working on here at Kawasaki. There's also some aircraft parts they're working on. So uh, this big green machine right here, that is probably the world's largest rivet gun. Uh, and what this machine does is it rivets together big cargo doors for uh, basically giant cargo planes, Boeing 777s and 777Xs. Uh, so not much going on here today, but this is definitely an area of the factory where they work on some super high precision stuff, um, which is needed in the aerospace industry. So yeah, not only trains, but also aircraft doors as well. So there you have it, a deep dive into the Kawasaki Motors manufacturing facility in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's always really cool to get an inside look at how different vehicles are made. And this one's especially cool since we got to see exactly how the mule we have up at the ranch was put together in this exact location right here. I hope you learned something. Huge thanks to Kawasaki for getting you guys this inside look. And, and as always, don't forget to head on over to alltfl.com for more power sports content, and I'll catch you in the next video.